friends, this is Ashley Latecki Ellen Boss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today we'll be talking about sleep and we'll be exploring some of the most common troubles that people have with sleep and then herbal strategies for supporting both difficulty falling asleep and difficulty maintaining sleep. Before we go into that, I wanted to mention that right now, my husband and I are running a Kickstarter campaign to help raise money for the work that we do and for all of the free online YouTube videos and content that we create. So if you're enjoying this content, you know we, we put it out there on YouTube for free. And um, so we are fundraising like we do every year um, for the year ahead. So if you'd like to uh, support the work of Nightlight Astrology and my husband, Achuta Bhavadas, um, and my work here um, through Sky House Herb School, um, you can go to my husband's website, nightlightastrology.com and you can find the link to make a donation uh, and a pledge of support for our Kickstarter. Um, as a gift, you can receive a number of different recordings, uh, astrological recordings. You can also receive up to 50% of all of our training programs. You can receive 50% 50 50 off of um, my herbal apprenticeship course starting in January and 50% off uh, my husband's astrology training courses. So head over there and check it out after you listen. So let's now go into our topic, sleep. Um, so sleep issues are very common and they, I think, are more common in the modern age than they may have been for our ancestors. We definitely have higher amounts of stress. We have more unnatural light in our environment, especially if you live in an urban setting. Um, we have increased endocrine disruption from environmental reasons and also um, hormonal discrepancies and hormonal balance issues um, due to the environment and also due to a lot of medications and also uh, poor nutrition. So those are just a few of the reasons why uh, sleep is probably more of an issue in the modern world. So let's first take a look at how sleep works. You know, how, how do we sleep? We all know why we sleep. Our body regenerates and heals itself. It's also a time for our mind and our psyche to process the information of the day and maybe even material from the whole week. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, assimilation, digestion, and healing that happens both mentally and physiologically on the actual physical level of like tissue, bones, and organs that happens when we sleep. So sleep is absolutely critical to um, also our immune regulation. So we know that people that get less than eight hours of sleep typically have less active immune systems. And so uh, if you wanna keep your immune system in good standing, then you need to be getting sleep. Um, <clears throat> so how does sleep work? Well, sleep works through circadian rhythms, and these are based on light and dark cycles and light cycles associated with the sun and then dark cycles associated with night. And we know that the darkness is important because it starts to stimulate the production of melatonin. And melatonin is one of the hormones that our body produces, which helps us to sleep and stay asleep. We also have cortisol and cortisol levels play a big role in sleep as well, because what happens is cortisol levels start to dip around three o'clock PM. This is usually when people reach for sweets or snacks or coffee. Um, and that's natural though. Our bodies naturally cortisols and our energy starts to dip and it'll continue to dip as we go into the nighttime hours. Um, cortisol is balanced by food, specifically by proteins and fats. And so if we eat a, a diet rich in proteins and fats, then our cortisol levels are more apt to stay in balance. <clears throat> Whereas if we eat a very high carbohydrate and sugar rich diet, then those levels will actually fluctuate up and down much more. So the interesting thing is that um, when we wake up in the morning, the reason why our bodies wake up is due to these circadian rhythms of, of light and dark, but also because of blood sugar. So when our blood sugar levels drop, um, that's when cortisol spikes up, basically to wake us up because we are essentially, uh, our bodies say, hey, you're starving. <laughs> it's time to wake up and eat. So, you know, the 
some of the reasons why we might wake up in the middle of the night is if we have big drops in blood sugar. So we'll talk about that. Um, but blood sugar is important when we're considering sleep and uh, so is cortisol. And cortisol is that hormone that's responsible for that fight or flight um, pattern. So depending on why your sleep is being disrupted will help you know, you'll be able to determine which herbs and which strategies are best. So I'm going to talk about two main types of sleep dysregulation, um, and then the herbs that I have found in my practice to be most helpful. So the first scenario is difficulty falling asleep. So if you're one of those people where, you know, it, it, it's getting dark, later and later, but your mind can't stop, your mind is racing, maybe you lay down to sleep and you're thinking about all the things that happened in the day, you've got your laundry list of things that you have to do uh, in the morning and, um, you know, you're, you just have various sort of a web of scenarios that are keeping you from falling asleep. Um, this is a very common pattern that, that, is, uh, makes it difficult to fall asleep initially. So there are specific herbs for that pattern. There are specific herbs that help when you have a number of things swarming in your head and you can't turn your brain off. Um, the first one that I really like to use is skullcap. Um, Scutellaria lateriflora. It's a nice bitter nervine. It's a bitter relaxant and gentle sedative. Um, this one combines very well with passion flower and hops. So for people that Again, have that spinning brain, can't get off the hamster wheel. Try a combination of these nervines. So passion flower, skull cap, and hops. And I recommend it in a tincture form. And you could do equal parts of each of those three herbs in a tincture and take one teaspoon about 30 minutes before bed. And you should feel that it sort of starts to slow the mind down and it starts to sedate that overactive thinking. And it's also, you know, we have hops in there, which is a little bit bitter, which can also sort of cool and help calm down um, the mind and the body. Um, now, if your pattern is that you lay down to fall asleep and your mind is hooked on one thing, like you're obsessing about that thing you said to your boss, or you're obsessing about that one thing you didn't do right. Um, but it's like sort of a singular obsessive type of thinking that you can't get away from, then the herbs that are associated for that pattern would be milk, would be um, um, wild lettuce. Wild lettuce is a really good herb. It's another bitter and it's also in the poppy family. So it has this sort of not, I, I don't want to say narcotic, but it's narcotic like. Um, it's very relaxing, very cooling, very sedating, and very helpful for getting the hook, that fish hook out of that one thought so that your mind can just sort of relax and fall into sleep. Um, daisy is another one, Bellis perennius. Um, this is another herb that I've used in my practice for um, obsessive and OCD type of thoughts. And so that one can be found in a tincture or even as a homeopathic. So to take wild lettuce, I would recommend doing 15 to 30 drops about 30 minutes before bed and just see if that will help relax your nervous system and relax your mind. Um, for the daisy, you could do the same dose um, 30 minutes before bed, or you could combine the two together. Um, I, I do think herbal teas can be helpful for helping relax the nervous system and help you calming down before you go to bed. However, if you have uh, you know problems waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, an herbal tea is not great because you you know if you drink it too close to bedtime, which is when you kind of need those compounds, um, it can then wake you up. However, if you drink an herbal tea about an hour before you go to bed, and then you're very conscious about going to bed or going to the bathroom before you go to sleep then you should be okay. So a nice combination of herbs that are gentle nervines, which will help take that sort of edge off the mind and that those racing thoughts would be a blend of chamomile, lavender, passion flower, and lemon balm. And so just a, a ratio that would work well, you could do one teaspoon of chamomile, one teaspoon of lemon balm, half a teaspoon of passion flower, and half a teaspoon of lavender flowers. And you would add that into about one and a half cups of hot water, cover it, let it steep for five to 10 minutes, and then sip on that in the evening. And you might find that that really helps. 
if you have a pattern um, call, you know, I, I think of it as like wired, but tired where you're so exhausted, but you can't fall asleep. It's like, you, you kind of like don't have the energy to fall asleep. And it's, you know, I've had, I remember this back in like my college days where, you know, I'd be up late cramming for an exam or writing a paper really late. And then, you know, I'd be so wired from being on a screen um, and I'd be so tired that my body would just lay there and it, it felt like I was like plugged into an outlet. It was just like, bzzz, and I'm like, I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted, but I can't, I just couldn't fall asleep. So that type of pattern um, works really, really well. Uh, valerian works really well for that pattern. And valerian is a warming herb. So if you tend to run warm, then you, then I wouldn't recommend this plant. This one is really good for people that have you know, nervous exhaustion, and they tend to run a little bit cold, like cold hands and limbs, maybe sluggish digestion. Those are the patterns I look at for um, valerian. Now, if you're wired but tired, but you tend to run more on the hot side, then you would do really well with an infusion of milky oats or oat straw. Um, milky oats are ideal. They're kind of hard to get in their milky stage because it's a very fine window. When you dry them, you don't quite get the benefit, but they're, you know, there's still some good qualities in there. You can, so you can do, um, try to get milky oat tops. Oat straw is very nutritive and nervine, or your best bet would to try to get milky oat tops in a tincture and then take two droppers full. Uh, and this one you can take in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening to just try to get a nice baseline in your body to take that nervous exhaustion down to feed your nerves so that you'll be more prepared for bed. The other things to say in terms of um, some tips that might be helpful if you have difficulty falling asleep, um, sleep hygiene is something that we talk about a lot in the herbal world, which is just making sure that your lights are off, that you've got really dark curtains, that any computer lights or those glowing blue lights or red lights or green lights that are on a lot of electronic devices, those are covered and off because even though they're small, they can change your melatonin production. So cover all all devices, all lights. And I tell my clients to about an hour before your planned bedtime, so set a time where you wanna fall asleep, an hour before that, turn off all devices, including TV, phones, computers, light a candle, try to have the lights down low, read a book, um, you know, do really, you know, take a bath, do relaxing activities to help get your whole nervous system ready for sleep. Um, also, some people that have really high cortisol levels might need to exercise in order to burn them off. So for people that lay down to go to sleep, but they still feel like they're in that fight or flight kind of hyper reactive state, um, and they, they're, they're um, wired, but maybe not that tired. For these people, it might be a good idea after dinner to go on a long walk or uh, you know, before dinner, have a really good long workout. Um, and for a lot of people, when you burn the cortisol off in that way, um, then it can help your body be better ready to fall asleep. Now, the second pattern that is quite common is difficulty staying asleep. And some people actually have both. So you could imply, you know, use both strategies here. But this difficulty staying asleep is also called sleep maintenance insomnia. And um, there's a few reasons for this. The, one of the things that I've seen in my practice is that it's because of blood sugar levels. So if people are either... Um, you know, not eating enough protein and fat in the evening time, or they just have, you know, a dysregulation, maybe they have a blood sugar imbalance, or um, they have metabolic syndrome, or they have really, you know, um, diabetes, or just their blood sugar is like very, is, is variable, then for these people, what might be happening is that they fall asleep, but their blood sugar actually crashes. And so then that cortisol boosts them and wakes them up. Um, so that's, you know, if, if that's what you're experiencing, Scene, then one thing you can do is eat a little bit of hand, like a handful of nuts, like almonds or walnuts before you go to bed, maybe 10, 15 minutes before sleep, not enough to overwhelm your digestive system, but just enough to give your body something to work on and digest and to maintain your blood sugar levels while you're sleeping. Also, maybe a little tiny cup of plain yogurt with nothing added, no sweeteners um, could also work. 
And um, the other reason that people wake up, sometimes it's hormonal. It can be due to perimenopause or menopausal symptoms. Um, and so using some of our uh, phytoestrogenic herbs that are also nervine sedatives can be really good here. So if you're waking up with night sweats or you're just you know in perimenopause and you just can't fall into deep sleep, my favorite formula for this is a blend of hops, blue, uh, blue vervain and black cohosh. So you could do equal parts of those three plants and take one teaspoon before bed and then have that dropper bottle next to your bedside. And if you wake up in the night, just take a squirt or two of that in your mouth and just try to relax. And then you'll, you know, I've had so many clients who say, okay, I wake up, I take a squirt or two, I lay there and then my body goes back to sleep. So you can try that because some of, one of the reasons why we have the, the hot flashes or um, you know, that nervous system, uh, that cortisol spike can be, can be hormonal. Now for men who have a hormonal uh, reasoning, it could be because of menopause or, or testosterone changes. So if testosterone is fluctuating, this can also cause sleep pattern issues. And so taking something like uh, saw palmetto in a capsule form is a really good idea. So I would recommend taking two capsules twice a day, each capsule, um, and that would be about 500 milligrams of saw palmetto in the morning and in the evening. And that will likely help to balance those levels. Um, another thing that, uh, you know, there's also just, um, uh, there can be, uh, you know, your body, the, in Chinese medicine, they have the body clock. And so they look at what time people are waking up and then the organs associated with that. Now, the most common one I see in my practice is people waking up between two and 4 a.m. And this is when the liver is doing its job. So if you find that the, you are always waking up between those hours, um, especially maybe after you've been out drinking or had a glass of wine at night, um, then that could be a, a sign that your liver might need more support. So using some of these bitter nervines like hops and blue vervain and chamomile, um, these might be really good remedies to take before bed to help support your liver and also to help you sleep. You could also try capsules of um, milk thistle and those can be helpful uh, to just for supporting liver health and tissue regeneration. Uh, I've also seen really good success with people taking CBD or cannabis-based products, especially when there's THC in it. I haven't seen as much success with CBD without THC. So I would recommend um, you know, using a full spectrum blend uh, with the 0.3% THC added and take, uh, you know, you can take up to 2,500 milligrams before bed, about 30 minutes before bed. Um, you can take it most of the time they're sold in oil forms. Um, and then, you know, while you're asleep, it'll start to kick in usually after about an hour or so. And it just sort of, again, it helps that bliss response in your body. So that agitations and fluctuations um, in the body won't actually wake you out of a deep sleep. So I would recommend that. My friend, Rochelle Baca, um, she is a THC and a sacred plant teacher, a sacred cannabis plant teacher. So you can look her up um, and she has a really wonderful um, cannabis nervine blend that blends skull cap and some other nervines with cannabis. And it's really, really wonderful. So um, if you're interested, you can reach out to me and I can send you her contact information. And then the third thing I'll say for, or the last thing I'll say for um, sleep maintenance using herbs is using adaptogens. And so adaptogens are really crucial here because sometimes, you know, again, our, our nervous system and our bodies might be in a, a depleted state. And so we might, again, not have that energy to maintain sleep. So using adaptogens to normalize and stabilize your deeper um, endocrine and um, uh, adrenal, adrenal functioning is a really good idea. So I would recommend some of our relaxing Nervine um, adaptogens like ashwagandha is wonderful, reishi mushroom, and shisandra berry. So ashwagandha um, has the the Latin name uh, withania somnifera. And so somnifera is like som, like insomnia. It's somnia, it, somnifera means to sleep. So this, is an, this has been used in 
traditional Ayurvedic medicine to help with sleep. So ashwagandha is a great herb to take. Um, reishi is a wonderful mood stabilizer and it builds shen and happiness in the body and in the mind. Um, so this is another nice one to add in. And then shisandra is a great one for kind of leaky energy. And one of my friends and colleagues, uh, Richard Mandelbaum just did a talk for us um, on herbal adaptogens. You can listen to that on my website, skyhouseherbs.com. Click on the events and then the events replay. And you can see all of those free talks. And Rich did a great job talking about adaptogens. And he said that for Shisandra specifically, you know, for people that just sort of, it's like they have like energy diarrhea and they might even have physical diarrhea, but it's for like leakiness, like leaky energy, poor boundaries, difficulty holding things in, um, including your own uh, vital force. So Shisandra Berry is an excellent herb for that. And I would recommend that if you're having difficulty staying asleep. Um, so you could do one or a blend of all three. There's a wonderful blend made by herbalists and alchemists. This is David Winston's herbal company. It's called Calm Adapt. And you can find it on his website, herbalistsandalchemists.com. And it contains ashwagandha, linden, milky oat seed, reishi, and shisandra. So it's a lovely blend if this is a pattern that you are, you know, resonating with. Um, and, you know, milky oat seed is another one. It, while it's not an adaptogen, it's definitely a nervine. And that would be a really nice one you could do also for difficulty staying asleep. So I hope that was helpful. Um, please let me know if you've had any experience working with these herbs, what you've done, any other tips of, of you know, from your own experience in working with insomnia and sleep issues that you might want to share. And if you do have a second to head over to my husband's website, nightlightastrology.com and make a small contribution of any kind, uh, we would really, really appreciate that. Uh, we are really trying to get, we had 690 backers last year, and we're trying to get 691. So if you would help us reach that goal, we would really greatly appreciate it. And you can pick up some prizes and um, gifts for, for any donation that you make. So thank you again for watching everyone. Take care. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.